Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. It's part of the 10th anniversary of the Jazz Standard. One of the most iconic jazz organists, Dr. Lonnie Smith, is celebrating a week-long engagement here. He's celebrating his 70th birthday, as well as on the heels of releasing a brand new record called The Healer which is a trio recording which features drummer Jemira Williams as well as Jonathan Kreisberg on guitar. I sat down with Dr. Smith and we talked about his career, we talked about the importance of the jazz organ, and we also talked about what jazz means to him. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Dr. Lonnie Smith live here as part of the 10th anniversary of the Jazz Standard here in New York City. First of all, I want to congratulate you. Happy birthday. You just turned 70. As well as you have this dynamic album coming out called The Healer. The Healer. The Healer uh, is the, the next album, which will be out shortly. And uh, you're getting a taste of it now, right at the present. Uh, it's on Pel uh, Pilgrimage Records. It's a uh, label of mine is um, I have set up, so it's really nice. So I can't wait myself. The people also uh, that are help, I would say they help produce it too. The people was involved. That's a great thing. When people get involved with what you're doing, they have been involved for many, many years, but to... Uh, like say hey we are here and we'll show you that's what's been happening with this and i'm really stunned proud uh, and i love it and they showed me how much they loved it you know jamira williams is on this and also jonathan kreisberg is on guitar and this trio really is going back to some of the beginnings of where you kind of started 
I, I think so, and it, it has uh, a fresh, fresh to sound. I, I, uh, they have brought some freshness in it also. Uh, with their styles, it works with my style. And uh, we have a pretty good gel. I, I would say a wonderful gel. And um, they keep the energy uh, level nice, uh, so it's great. It's great. I enjoy them. They're such great players. Yes. Dr. Lonnie, this record is on your brand new imprint, and for years you've dealt with the rigmarole of the major labels. Why did you decide now at 70 to really kind of take the bull by the horn and record your own project and put it out there by yourself? Uh, well, first of all, it's, it's like I, what I enjoy is doing is most is playing, and uh, when you're playing, you, you really want to let the people hear what you're about uh, musically. You want to touch the people in a way that uh, you would like to be uh, touched as far as the music is concerned. Uh, and a lot of things uh, are put in the can that the people don't know, uh, don't realize that uh, some of the things the musicians play, they never hear. It will never be on recording. They will never hear it. So, uh, just like I said, this was a perfect timing for me, and um, I'm really into it. I, I feel good, strong about what I'm doing. <laughs> about your origins in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. It was there where you started off. You didn't start off on organ. You started off on a little gym called uh, a recorder, cornet. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. The cornet, and what happened, I wasn't going to play uh, trumpet or cornet. What had happened was uh, I was in this classroom uh, Maisie Campbell and everyone in the classroom played an instrument practically. I don't know how that happened. I don't even know how I got in there. And my buddy Ronald Goins played trumpet and sister played piano. I would go over to the house and I'd be sitting there and say, we got to rehearse now. Our teacher is here. And I said, I'll wait. And they would practice, 
Yeah, well-to-do family, you know, they had a little, you know, I was, I grew up poor, you know, on the other side. So, Father Obama knew trumpet with the velvet inside, it looked so beautiful. So one day he had the trumpet and he, and the, you know, they brought the instruments to the classroom, right? So I opened up his trumpet, a case, and I started playing the trumpet, messing around. Now how can you get a tone out? You don't even know anything about the trumpet. And I played a little sound that they couldn't believe it. So the, my friends, they drug me to the music room, a uh, band room, pushed me in and closed the door and looked through the window. People were knowing, looking at me. I said, D. Augustine, I'll never forget. He says, can I help you? I says, well, I want to play an instrument. He says, what would you like to play? I says, saxophone. He says, we don't have any more. The reason I wanted to play sax because my mother loved sax. So anything else you want to play? I say, nah, he say, you sure? I say, I say trumpet, because my brother played trumpet. So he said, we don't have any more of those, because the girls, a lot of them had the saxophones, and everybody had. So he said, I have a cornet. Cornet, on a trumpet, you know. He brought it out. It's about this long, you know, a little short thing, an old beat up horn. It would look like a Civil War instrument. Hmm. I mean, because it wasn't pretty gold and shiny, it wasn't looking like that. It was like silver and it had been tarnished a little bit. And <laughs> so he gave it to me, he said, Go ahead, let me. You know. I took it and I don't know how it came out, but he said that sounds like that. A school alma mater. So he says, okay. So he gave me that. It, you know, so I took it home. Next day when we had band practice, I mean, uh, it wasn't band, it was band practice, but not for the school band. It's like the beginner's class. I'm in there and I'm playing with everybody else, he said, hmm, the next, this is the first week now, the next day we went and had band practice. I was like getting better by the moment. He said, look like we got a star in here. And star, so he says, Friday, you come down at this auditorium, you know, playing the school band. They put me in the band. And just like the, how I got that was, I had my own way. I would remember it, one, two, three. One, two, three. Not A, B, C, D, not that. One, two, three. Which valves, the first two valves down. Third, first and third. See, I would remember that the first valve. I remember how the note went. Do 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 Right. To get a high note, you say t a t, a lower note two. All right. So I had a line that went up and down. It went up and went down. Which way the music went. Learn the melody and then I followed it. That was it. So you were pretty much a child prodigy. You you really were not a person that studied. No, no not at all. I remember the first time I played piano. I played Crown in the Chapel. It was an F sharp. F sharp. And I was like uh, third grade. I couldn't even, you know, my feet wouldn't touch, and I didn't have a piano. My aunt, we was visiting, 
we were visiting, and she had a piano. And my mother and my aunt was in the kitchen. And I was just fumbling around the piano. I still remember it today. I picked it out just like that. And they came running and they couldn't believe it. But I didn't have, I never had an instrument like that. I never, you know. <laughs> I just want to get your take on some of the organ players through the years and mm -hmm. his couple of names. Mm -hmm. First one is Thomas Fats Waller. Oh, yeah. Great, great, great. He brought a lot to the organ, a uh, style and flair that uh, a lot of uh, musicians still haven't gotten out of. Yeah. Wild Bill Davis. Wild Bill Davis. He also brought a, a style to the organ that uh, a lot of people still trying to play also. He had like a orchestrated style that uh, the way he played the organ. It was uh, really full and beautiful, like a big band. Milt Buckner. Milt Buckner. Oh, Milt Buckner is another one. So you're naming, you're naming some of mine. My heroes there, you know, uh, Milk Butner. Uh, you, uh, you should, you should have saw him, man. He, he was playing, and he played like he wasn't playing, cause he enjoyed that playing uh, when he played. And him and Joe Jones, Papa Joe, you, it's like they weren't playing at all, cause they enjoyed it and they played together. So beautiful. Great player, great player. The legendary Jimmy Smith. Jimmy, I, are you, you talking about my son? <laughs> uh, Jimmy, he, he turned, I think, uh, when he came, he turned all the organ players on. 
uh, he had, um, his feeling was uh, he swung. He took the organ and took it somewhere that uh, you weren't thinking about. You know, he swung this organ and uh, feeling, I love his feeling, um, his touch. Uh, and uh, he played like, some of the things like horn lines, he was, he was beautiful. You know, uh, when I heard him, a friend of mine, never forget this, Bernard Neely, came across, knocked on my door. He said, man, you got to hear. I wasn't playing. And he had this record his brother had. His brother played organ. Wasn't into the organ. I mean, I wasn't playing it. Went over his house and he put it on. I fell in love. And then the organ was sitting there. He had an organ. It's, I couldn't really touch it because that was his brother's organ, the older brother, you know. But when I heard him, that was it. And everybody else heard him. Uh, but I didn't know that I was going to play organ because I was singing and I was a vocalist. But when Mr. Art Kabir gave me that organ, that was it. That was it. That was it. When he says, this is yours, I went in a music store and he says, I brought it out. We were in love. We were in love. I found my love. The organ, see, the organ is not only that, it's a part of me, an extension of my being. It really is. It's like, it's one if you don't see wood on, this arm, <laughs> on my arms. It's a, an extension. And it breathes when I breathe. It says what I wanted to say when I can't say it. It will speak for me. Everybody knows about your rise when you join 
George Benson's group, and then you recorded with Lou Donaldson and Alligator Boogaloo. But you really are also part of a very important part of jazz. You recorded on the Blue Note label, and that sound and the look of the album covers and just the direction of America's original classical music was really that was really the the dean of the labels what was your time like there and what was it like working with Rudy Van Gelder as well as Alfred Lyon great they were so great they were before their time also uh, when uh, uh, Alfred Lyon and uh, what they did they sort of had a, uh, something that told them, something inside of them, when they called somebody to play on Blue Note Records. They had a feeling, a gut feeling. Uh, when I was called to Blue Note Records, uh, I had did a um, record with Lou Donaldson. Uh, we were in the studio. Rudy Van Gelder, he was the only one who knew how to, to bring out that organ the way it's supposed to sound. He had it down. He had sound. It was just the sound over there, too. He knew how to get everybody sounding great. He it was warm. It was great. And he, when he came in that studio, he knew what he was doing. And what happened, Frank and Alfred and when they would go there and listen to the, when we're cutting the record, this is how I knew that it was sound good, was sounding good to them. Uh, Frank would start to dancing, and oh man, he had his own rhythm. He would start dancing, you know, it was a hit, cause he, that's the way he was. And see, when I recorded with Lou, George and I, um, cause I was with Columbia Records, and after I recorded with Lou, and they heard the organ, they asked me to come over there. Duke Pearson called me, and he said, "I think they want you over here." And <clears throat> now back to what you were saying, I was excited, <clears throat> but as a kid, I was let down a lot. So. Uh, I uh, kept it inside, like, well, I was excited, but I didn't want to, like, go overboard. It was always, what if, until it happens, it's not happened. So I was, because everybody was over at Blue Note Records. All the greats were there. So. Uh, it happened. So uh, I went in the studio and recorded. Before you know it, hit. I said, oh boy. Now George Benson and I were playing together, don't forget. And my records took off. <laughs> and I hadn't been playing long. I said, When I say I haven't been playing long, take for instance, if you play a song, and you write a song, rather, and you haven't played it yourself, really, in a group sitting, you just know the song, but you haven't played off of it, soloed off it, and you don't know it. You just started. It. It's just a song I wrote. I made, and I was, boom, there it was. So I had to, to make it work, and I did, and George, when I go on the road, I didn't have a group, so I said, George, I'm playing with George, but my record was, <laughs> it was gone. So it was, it was sort of tricky. That's when, um, uh, I got Melvin Sparks, 
and uh, I would take David out and Lee and you know and Morgan and David Newman, you know, and because <clears throat> um, that was record and I did. I'd say, hey, come on, you know. And you kind of uh, helped Lee Morgan kind of increase his his his. Uh, his musicianship again because his record sales were on the decline also. Yeah, it was a whole different thing. Whole diff whole different thing. And then the style. The style that that I come out, you know, with that's the difference, a little different than Jimmy and a little different than the rest of them. So it was like it worked. Boy, it worked. It really worked. Fired right up. You know, it's the blend was so beautiful. We used to have fun in the studio. Like we would get in the studio, and uh, they'd have the food over there and uh, everything, and party sitting like, just like you at home. We had fun. I got to go holler at Rudy. You know, let him know that we're still here. You know, because he did such a wonderful job, and he's still doing it. But although he doesn't have the same equipment, you know, he sold one of his uh, boards to George Benson some time ago. It's been a while ago. Been a while back in the early, um, late six or early seven. Yeah. <laughs> jazz music mean to you? Jazz music mean to me a way of expressing yourself because it's part of the music uh, it's, it's part of a uh, living and that's what jazz is a name that they put on the music anyway but we're just playing something that we're put here to do on earth. I am the man who was here before that didn't finish what he had to do, if I should pass, I will return to complete my work. That's what it means to me. It's expressing, expressing how you feel. What happened that day? Tell your story. I don't know what it means to other people, but that's what it means to me. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Dr. Lonnie Smith for his time, as well as the staff and management here at the Jazz Standard. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.